Welcome to the Too Posh Podcast. I am Gabrielle. I am a former New York Mafia princess, originally from Austria. I am the mother of three and the owner of Too Posh Boutique. And here with my beautiful co-host, Marcella, my daughter. Hello, I'm Marcella. I'm a dancer, choreographer, model, and designer for Too Posh. And I say whatever the f- I want. Hi, my name is Cruz. I am a stylist. I also own the Society Salon in the design district and I am a short little Mexican with a big personality. What will they say next? Welcome to the Two Posh Podcast. But you on your own have created something that's amazing that I want to talk about a lot. It's called Creators Capital. Yeah. yeah and sure. um tell us about that because I think I've never heard of something like this before. And yeah. from every, from the beginning to the end and the passion you have for the Gen Z generation, um, tell us more about that because when I reconnected with you and we recon- reconnected with each other, that is just your passion is so big on that, that yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, literally yeah. like infectious to other people. Thank you. It always has been, you know, I've been very fortunate to work with three generations of young people. And the insight that I have into human experience is pretty rich, you know, especially from the lens of the youth. I read a statement the other day that says, you know, you want to check the temperature of a culture, listen to the music of its youth or, or listen to the stories of its youth. So I've always been close to the music and the stories of the youth from Gen X, which is my generation, millennials, which is some of my clients who are some of the most accomplished. My clients and partners are some of the most accomplished. One of them, Kizzo, won album of the year at the Grammys last year. Music video of the year at the Grammys last year as well. And then now Gen Z. So the little engine that always turned inside of me was remembering that I was that boy, was talented with no real roadmap on how to be successful. We got lucky, you know, a song showed up, executive showed up, we caught a break, and then it's on us to make the most of it because it wasn't like the system was like, okay, now that you're in, this is the program to retirement. No, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to create a better way for creative young people, you know, and the opposite, what really opened my eyes is because I was so interested in technology and innovation, I would see that if you're a guy at Harvard and you have an idea for Facebook, there's like an A to Z plan to turn you into a turn it into a billion dollar company and to make you and still and to still protect you as the creator, the original creator of that idea. So I was like, why don't we have that in creative industry. Why don't we have that in the entertainment industry? It's the same processes over and over and over again. You got to develop talent. You got to create projects. You got to start up and grow companies that it's the same process. So I learned from the tech world, how they do their thing because they needed our thing. It was a, there was that disruption that was going on where the technology community said, Oh, we can build the highways, but the, The cars are creative. It's the music. It's the talented people that need to really drive the adoption of the technology of YouTube. It's the people who create the videos. See you doing this. Or it's the, you know, the people who create the posts on Instagram or the TikToks. Those are the, that's where the rubber hits the road. So why don't we, why do we have all of those systems and processes and best practices and resources available for the tech side of it, but not the creative side. So that's why I created Creators Capital, because I was like, I want to make sure that the next generation of young people have all the resources they need to be as creative as possible, but still monetize their art, protect their intellectual property, start up and grow companies that they think should should exist and that they can they can lead. And um, it was just a dream, as Biggie would say. And the more it is, this is the truth now. You know, if you're a creative person, we have creator houses. Um, I don't charge talented young people to stay in creator houses. You know, we can we have a program where they can 
learned dialogue, which I think is the foundation of being a healthy young person today, having a life skill like that to help you have improved relationships with other people, which helps you have better mental health because mental health is their true crisis. No other generation had that crisis like Gen Z. So I had to solve that problem, and I have. Dialogue life skills is how we solve that problem. And then um, developing their talent, have a nine-step process on developing talent, creating projects, and starting up and growing your own company. Just like if you were a tech kid signing up for an incubator or an accelerator program, we have that for creative people at Creators Capital. So, mm-hmm. How does uh, Creators House, like what does that look like? <laughs> so Creator Houses are, they've been around forever, by the way. This has been the secret to a lot of things. First of all, most people think that the industry creates stars. I don't believe that. I think that parents and homes create stars. And it's the parents' work with that child early that gives them the path to be someone that an industry person would want to invest in. So the star making process starts in homes and the technology innovation process starts in homes. Einstein was in a home with his friends innovating. So the idea of, you know, Jackson five, you know, where were they created? They were created in their home. Beyonce and Desi's child, where was that created in a home? So this whole idea that creativity the real epicenter of that is in a home, even with me. You know, what did I say to you? I was, I didn't have parents at home, but my boy did. And when his mom was at work, we moved the furniture and tore up the carpet dancing all day long. Is in that home. So, crater houses are the first approach to scaling that in a way that allows young people to have a place to go to maximize the, the, the potential of being, being creative. And so we have a whole platform of solutions to their challenges like mental health, and we have a whole platform of opportunities to them being as creative as possible and monetizing that and protecting their intellectual property assets and things like that. So it's where my work really gets done. And I'm really proud of the the team I have to support this, the LinkedIn community I have to to pull from when I need great business leaders to step in as Gen Z allies because the only way I can make this all free for Gen Z, which is really important to me because I don't think young people should be paying for this kind of stuff, is that my community of business leaders, you know, provide knowledge transfer, teach Gen Z what they know about life and business. But at the same time, they make a funding contribution to what we're doing. So that's how I make it free for Gen Z. So we have three creator houses in Los Angeles. We just expanded to Dallas. I just raised $100 million in financing from a, a real estate investor that I worked with for a year to package and pitch real estate, the real estate investment community on why creator houses can outperform buying to Airbnb or buying to flip. You know, that's their traditional model or buying to, you know, catch a check with a monthly mortgage. So we've proven to my investors that buying to create our house is a double bottom line business opportunity that's unparalleled really in, 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 in business. <laughs> well, that's that the is, other part of me. I mean, how do you, like, how do you, do the creators come to you? Do you choose them? Um, well, creators are everywhere. We are all creative. Everybody talks about we're right and left brain. Um, I think we're actually a brain. We're just one brain. We all have one brain. It's just right and left. And we're not own, we're not one or the other. It's what you choose to develop in yourself. But creative people are everywhere. I historically have had so much access to creative individuals, young and accomplished. 
So both, right? So on one end, I think about J Rock's in town right now. He's won seven Grammys. He's a Gen Z ally with us. He wrote Drunken Love by Beyonce, produced that with Timberland. He's available for my creators. I say, J Rock, I need you to support these creative young people. Then that flow between me and him, he said, Oh, I found this kid. And I say, I found this kid. And then me and J Rock look at each other and go, Do we want to partner up on any of these people that we found together? Or J Rock, I got a creator house now. Why don't you come over here and check out what they did this month? So it's the process of identifying talent, spotting it, scouting for talent is a natural thing for us. It's just what we do all day long, right? It's just what we have access to. The future of that is going to be, you know, well, I'll, I'll announce in Dallas, Texas, that we have our first creator house under this fund in June. And I'll make known that if you're creative or you're a parent of a creative person, submit your kid. There will be two creators that, are, that are, will, will live and manage the house They'll probably be really talented at something and have a big following on social media, 500 to a million followers kind of thing. They'll manage the house. And then um, the community around them will be probably 50 creators that have an average of 100,000 followers um, that will come and work with them on different projects and come and work with them on different company opportunities or brand opportunities and things like that. And then those that reach with our program will impact 5 million Gen Z kids in a positive way every year from that one creator house. So, yeah. So it's just a natural thing for us with talent, but then there's a whole like next level to it that we're going to, where we're going to make it known that we're here to do this. So, How does that make you feel like as a creator yourself and like, um, like a choreographer, like, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm not Gen Z, though. But I'm... But I... But you work with Gen Z kids I all do. The time. Yes, but I don't work with creators, though. Like, the kids aren't creators. I do it. But I can, I can appreciate the house point because that's where I've done all mine. Me and my friends, we love creating content. It's like a... Um, passion of mine I guess it's where because I am a dancer choreographer so it's a way to express you're a great dancer and choreographer thank you and you know I see where you're where you're making your videos to your point yeah I mean it's happening in some home somewhere right yeah usually always or the ideas are sparked in the house I think so it's and then I can also I don't know if this is the same but at the time remember the um the TikTok house the mm -hmm. yeah. whatever exactly. oh, yeah so I also have seen a few people on YouTube um, that are my age or so. They all live together and a lot of people have judged it, but they're living together, creating content like at all times because content creating can be so financially if you love it. Like I love it. So that's why I love to focus on it. But it gets tough because financially when you're working, you're like, how do I create? At that's the, same the piece time? that. We help monetize, right? right? We know how to do that. You we, know how, yeah. yeah. That's probably the hardest part because you'll see some people making a living off of a certain amount and you're like, how does that work? So it's kind of, it's a whole business with Well, let's itself. take you as an example. Yeah. So um, what what platforms are you using? Uh, TikTok and Instagram. Okay. So what's your following on TikTok and Instagram? Um, my TikTok following is 460,000 mm -hmm. and my Instagram is 109. Okay. Thousand. So you basically reach 500,000 people on your platform. Right. And do you want to grow that? Yes. Do you know how to grow that? No. You would learn that in a creator house. Right. Um, do you know how to monetize your existing? No. Audience? You would learn that in a creator house. Yeah. Um, if you, you had access to other creators for projects that you have in your mind, like is there a project that you would love to create? Yes. Okay. Always. So give me an example of it. Give me an example of a project that if you had all the resources in the world, you would create right now. Oh gosh. Off the top of my head. I mean, this is one, obviously you would make this yes, podcast really successful sure. and monetize yeah. this podcast. This is a project. Yes. Right. But so this is a perfect know. example mm -hmm. of one of the projects. Mm -hmm. There are probably others. So I know exactly how to monetize this podcasts and grow yeah, like don't know that either. you know that oh yeah. i could tell you about a woman by name hala she's probably your age 
uh, younger even, but she runs an incredible business monetizing podcast. See what I'm saying? So it's just me having access to the yeah. resources that a creator would need. Yeah. And you would say, okay, let me check into that. Yeah. And then do you have a company? Do you personally have a company behind your, that you've set up for you as a creator? No. Okay. You have to set that up. Right. Because now you need to understand that you're a business. Yeah. And businesses like to do, in our world, like to do business with people, with businesses. Like, so then you would have, you set up a business, all of the assets that you create are attached to that business. Yeah. Then you have team members that share in the revenue of the things that you create that are attached to that business. Right. And then what happens next? Investors show up. Right. And say, this is pretty organized in a way that I can invest in. Right. So if you have more projects and if you're going to go from 500,000 to 5 million, yeah, you're a real business opportunity right. for me. So right. if, I, if I say I can see you going from 500,000 to 5 million, it's on. Right. It's that simple. Right. Because at 5 million, now you're, it's a serious, it's a serious business. For sure. At 50 million, what happens then? Your life changes. It's really. over. Yeah. It's like you can do anything you want. You yeah. you literally have. It. So this is the spirit of creators capital. Right. And the simple fact that you don't have the know how yet. Yeah. To do it drives a person <laughs> like me crazy. Yeah. Because that's ridiculous. Right. If you're if you were a tech kid and you were at Harvard, you would have all the know how knocking on your door. That's true. But I'm telling you right now that you're you're the future. Uh huh. Being a creator, this is the creative age. Mm -hmm. The creator economy is booming. And all of the highways are now built. So you know what all these companies are turning to now? Creative, creative people. Yeah. Link Microsoft is the number one, two, and three company at any given time every year. You know what they own that you're probably not focused on? What? Are you on LinkedIn? I'm sitting there. But you're I'm sitting not. on LinkedIn. You're not. You're yeah. not creating for LinkedIn. No, I am not. What if I told you that that's the number one platform you should be creating for? I would believe you. Why? Because I feel like you have the knowledge and the you've put all this time into it, and I I do believe I try very hard to listen to people that have done this. So, and every time I'm like, and okay, I I'll respect do that. that. Yeah. I respect that. But I, I what I meant is instinctually uh -huh. why do you think that i would say something like that because it's a business platform correct and what do you need the most for this podcast business <laughs> what kind of business um like investor or monetize advertisers, yeah, advertisers investors yeah. strategic partners yeah you think that they're on tiktok no are they on instagram they have a presence on the, all these platforms yeah maybe but, but the decision makers, the people who write the checks, are on LinkedIn. That makes sense. It's more business. <laughs> so the closer you get to having a presence on LinkedIn, LinkedIn where yeah. you can monetize the thing, you you as a talent, you as a businesswoman with a podcast with your with your mom, you know, the closer you get to the money, yeah, the closer you are to the money. Right. Okay. So these are the things that there, and there's thousands of these things. Yeah. You know that I pour into creative people. Mm -hmm. You said earlier, I'm not a Gen Z. I yeah. just told you I work with every generation of creator on I mean, the planet. That's true, yeah. It's not about being Gen Z. For me right now, I believe we have a responsibility to the future of our world. Yeah. And that if we don't step up, me, your mother, you, mm -hmm. who are, you're millennial, right? Yes. So you, we're, we're Gen X and I recruit boomers as well. Yeah. To support the youth. They're the largest population on the planet. There's 2.47 billion Gen Zers between the ages of 12, 11 years old and 27. Wow. They're one third of the world's population. So you working with young people mm -hmm. is not a small thing, yeah. especially to somebody on LinkedIn. That's, oh. a, that's a marketer that says, I have, I have no clue how to reach them. Oh. I can't run commercials for them. I can't put it, my ad in the newspaper. I can't... Um, and you're like, I have 500,000 followers yeah. and I have in extreme insight into millennials and Gen Z. Mm -hmm. Every advertiser on the planet is trying to crack that nut. Yeah, and I have a lot of Gen Z. And you people. have a lot of Gen Z and you have a lot of Gen Z outside, insight and you are millennial. Yeah. So this is all positive. You're the big sister to Gen Z. 
Right. So fact. Yeah, that is fact. That is, that, I mean, you couldn't have said that better. I know. She is yeah. that. I can tell. Yeah. I, but because I, also insane. because I know your mother really well. Yeah. I know that she, the spirit of your mother, has been passed on to you. Right. So I get the whole dynamic here. But my point is, right. For for me, I sit here and I go, at the end of the day, what are we doing with our talent mm -hmm. to develop ourselves? All mm -hmm. three of us. I can tell you what I'm doing to develop my talent. Mm -hmm. I tell you what I like to do, help your mom develop hers, you develop yours. Yeah. What projects are we going to support together? Mm -hmm. What companies are we going to support that we believe in? Right. What candidates are we going to support that are running for president? Like, we have the power to do so much as yeah. creative people now. And that was not always the case. No, that's very true. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, so, you know. I'll give you I'll give you a final word on this because I could talk about this all day. But at the end of the day, think about yourself like this. There was a time when Oprah had a show. It was very few shows on the on television at that time. My mom loves Oprah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And every week, people like your mother would show up and watch Oprah's show. Yeah, it's religiously. What do you think is in what what would Oprah be doing? Five days a week, what would she be doing? Talking to people. Producing a show. Oh, yeah. For your mother and other women. Yeah. What's the difference in you producing a show for 500,000 people <laughs> every single day? It's your channel. Yeah, that's true. It's your audience. Yeah. And you have to produce for them. Right. What would it be like if Oprah was like, I just know how to produce for y'all, but I have no idea how this is going to make money. <laughs> that don't make no sense. That's me. <laughs> but that's my point. That's most creators today. That's not just you. So yeah. don't, don't feel bad about yourself. I'm just letting you know that. Yeah. There's a big piece of me that goes, I'm so grateful that I understand the history of our industry. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that I'm in the moment of our industry. And I'm incredibly grateful that I understand how the history and the moment plays out in the future. Right. So if I say to you, you are literally a mini Oprah. Yeah. With your own channel of 500,000 people that are showing up every day or every week mm -hmm. to check in on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You just need to build the same system and back in office stuff and support that Oprah had to monetize her show. Right. It's that simple. Right. So some things are innovative and some things are not. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That's true. It feels, I think it's helpful because it feels very overwhelming. I mm -hmm. mean, I can tell you from my personal experience, I started it because Gary Vee said, you should start TikTok. And I was like, okay, I'll listen to what he says because he seems to really... And I did this before anybody else and everybody made fun of me. And I was like, well, it's fun and I'm just going to listen. And it was something that I'm very thankful I did when I did it. And so then I started to do the reels because Gary Vee was like, you should Hit do the that. Reels. Yeah. So I said, I okay. remember those days when he was talking all that crap. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, okay, I'll just put all my TikToks on reels. And it really did something for my social media. But then I tell her all the time, I'm like, it's so overwhelming because I know that it could be, I could grow it, but I just don't know how. And you just don't know where to go. Well, see, if I were to say, okay, let's say Gary Vee and yeah. me. Yeah. Me and Gary Vee. Yeah. So for me, Gary Vee has done an incredible job on his personal branding, mm -hmm. his position, his contribution, and all that. Yeah. If I don't do what I do, you're never going to understand what to do. Oh, absolutely. If you're just looking at those little snippets of Gary Vee, I'm looking at it and going, baby, there are nine steps to developing of talent, course. creating projects, and starting up and growing companies. Yeah. Step one is we need to create a visual bio. We need to tell your story. Step two is we have to absolutely create what's called a strategic business framework with an action plan on a page. We have to build your brand <laughs> and have a strong brand. And I'm going to show you how to actually create a name, design, logo, color palette, all that. And I have all the world's greatest resources available. Gary Vee's not going to do that. No, absolutely. Okay. I so, agree with that. And I'm going to buy crater houses for you so you can show up and work with other people like you so you don't feel alone and isolated and your by house. yourself and what in you your own home. That? Yeah. I said it's very lonely sometimes. I'm it's, just creating content by myself. <laughs> and I'm telling you that that is not good for your mental health. Yeah. It's not good for your growth as a creator. Mm -hmm. And it's not good for your ability to monetize. We need other people. The spirit of this, of being human, is collaborating with others. Yeah. That is the fundamental, and, and so much of this has been changed 
with the, in, the invention of these phones that are in our me, these media devices, that's what I call them. I don't call them cell phones. They're <laughs> literally like media devices. It's true. And the screen between that that becomes between you and your relationships. Yeah. We got to be careful of that. We got to be more about, okay, that's a tool. I need to work on the things I need to, to do to connect with the people yeah. that are in my family, my friends, my co-creators in your sense, or co-workers in other people's sense, and, uh, and our followers. Yeah. How do you turn your followers into a resource for the advancement of you, the people you love and believe in, the projects you believe should exist, and the companies that that are conscious, mm-hmm. that are operating in a way that you believe that companies should operate today, and that's what that's uh, what we do. Yeah, I don't think there's anything like that. Though. There isn't. It's crazy. No, it's not. And I don't say that from a a position that I don't want it to be though. Elon Musk said to you, uh, if you look at, if you look, Google this and look this up, he'll say, Elon Musk said, uh, his patents for Tesla are open source. And people were, what? You, you, you take, you took the time to create something innovative. You then patented it. So other people couldn't replicate it. And then you made a business decision to say, I'm going to open source my patents. What's up with that? Someone like me goes, I totally get it. Because if you really are doing what the kind of work I do, the kind of work and position that Elon is in, where he's saying my patents are open source, I'm not comparing us at all. I'm just saying that in this space, right. in this mindset, we are 100% on the same page. You're doing this work not for the financial benefit or the benefit solely of yourself. You're doing this work for the advancement of humanity. So Elon is saying, if you can make a better Tesla than me, mm-hmm. here's the damn patents, bro. Please figure it out because if we don't make batteries and this and that, whatever, and save the planet, it ain't going to be none of us. I'm over here saying, if, if I don't show you guys that creator houses are important for the development of young people and for, that creators are the resource to help civilization advance in the right way and that young, the youngest people have a value system that you just don't understand and know about, and they don't know how to communicate to you without me. We're going to see more shootings. We're going to see more unemployment. We're going to see more suicides than you could ever imagine in 10 years. It's going to get worse. So do you think that I don't want people to replicate what I'm doing? I actually do. I 100% want people to replicate. I'm Open source. My everything I'm talking about is open source. Copy it, steal it, do whatever the hell you want to do with it. Do not feel like I'm coming after you. I'm gonna be better than you, but I'm just saying you ain't got the DNA, baby. But it's open source. Anyway, I mean, can I ask like some simple that those are questions that come up because I'm a mom and just. Something I love that, that about can... you. You are a real mom too. <laughs> but like, and I know about that. You are. You were, as a mother. You felt like a place that we wish we could go to. Both of us, me and Stuart, and you were like our sister. But we respected you as a mother. That's a fact. Yeah. Yes. And we felt like you and your husband at the time, we were accepted. We were. Uh, encouraged and you believed in us you didn't think we were wacky crazy people <laughs> no I hope you guys knew I, I truly loved you you loved I us loved, yeah. you loved I still us still do <laughs> and I just I don't want you to take that lightly because there weren't a lot of people that did that with us you know a lot of people thought we were completely off our rockers and we were but you need people like us. Yes. The world needs people like us because otherwise you don't have this. Mm-hmm. You don't have these solutions to big problems. Um, but I honor you because it's those moments in my life that kept me going, you know. And I can look back on that and go,
I wouldn't trade that for nothing. You know, mm-hmm. being able to go in your house, grab your boy and roll around on the floor and be like, steamroller. it's steamroller time, homie. <laughs> 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 and you look at it and say, look at that, this is crazy. <laughs> Not that, <laughs> hey, this black man is rolling around on my floor, my baby. <laughs> we have photos of that, I think. No way, that's yeah, wild. Yeah, there's videos, yeah. <laughs> I think that's why it's so vivid for me. Right. But probably. <laughs> I, I mean, so great. Now, my question for creator houses yeah. and it's just a normal regular question because I always think about all the things that can happen yeah. people usually don't get along very well when they live together that's right so how do you I handle not, that I, I would not be doing this if I didn't find a solution well first of all m- most companies have an HR division right human resources right that traditional human resources division of a company would not a would not apply as an easy fit to this for a few reasons that being said what does fit so there are doctors in town dallas texas called dr helena kelly hunt and harville Hendricks, and they created a uh they are relationship therapists so when i was going through my divorce i had I saw them on Oprah because they were on Oprah 17 times in 20 years. They wrote 10 books. One of them, four of them were bestsellers. One of them is like a, uh, it's iconic called getting to love you want. I recommend it to anyone that's wants to have better relationships. Um, they, their Institute trained over 3,300 licensed PhD level therapists on their methodology called Imago. And then some of their therapists held weekend retreats. So while I was going through my divorce, I caught wind of this. And I was like, okay, babe, we're going to try to fix this. We're going to try to sort this out. These people on Oprah, Oprah said he's her, her favorite therapist. We're about to get in the game on this. <laughs> so we went to the, we went, we hired a therapist, no matter where she was shooting a film or where I was working in the world. I'd look up, am I go therapist? And there'd be some in that nearby. And we'd go hire them and go to their therapist. Then their weekend retreat at the Pasadena a Michael Therapy Institute with Bruce and Francine, and we signed up for a weekend retreat with them and learned so much. And what I learned during those times ended up being so valuable to my work. So at the end of uh, the weekend retreats, I said to Bruce and Francine, I said, oh, my goodness. Why? I wish I had known this about this stuff early in life. I probably wouldn't be a couple in crisis. I know you guys are designed. This whole thing is designed for couples in crisis. But I don't understand. I wish I had learned this early in life. And Bruce and Pennsylvania just looked at me like puzzled. Like, oh, yeah, everybody says that. But at the end of the day, when you're a couple in crisis, you come to us and we help you put it all back together. I was like, dude, there's a lot of water under the bridge. I don't know. I think it's too late, but I'm glad to know it now. So fast forward 10 plus years later, I'm working with Gen Z and one of them named Haley West says to me, I need a therapist. I said, okay, cool. I'll get your therapist. <laughs> a little time went by and I didn't get her a therapist. She said it again. Mm-hmm. Yo, I told you I need a therapist. When am I going to get a therapist? You keep talking about developing my talent, creating my projects and starting up growing my company. But uh, I need a therapist. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hmm. Then I made a, another one. My, my Gen Zer said, uh, I tried to commit suicide twice. Gosh. A year before I met you. And the only reason I'm not, I'm alive today is because I met you and you believed in me and you've been working me four years and I never told you that. And this girl, her name is Melly. She has a, you look up at Melly Baby Music on on, on uh, all platforms. And she says that to me. And I said, what, Melly? You tried to commit suicide? So I started experiencing all this loneliness, anxiety, depression, suicide, violence among Gen Z. And I was like, what is going on with you guys? And then Haley asked again, I told you I need a therapist. I said, I think the best therapy for you would be this therapy called Imago. It's the therapy that I wish I had when I was your age. And maybe we should try to get you that. Okay. That was just my dream. I took this influencer um, roster led by Haley on the road, on a road show to my investment community where I'm saying, hey, there's a new star in town. They're creating content on social media and they remind me somewhat of being an artist, like a singer or an actor, 
which I've worked with both, but it's different because they own their own audience. But they, I still, I think my thing applies to them on how to develop a singer or how to develop an actor or how to develop a music producer or a songwriter and all these experiences I've had with working with some of the best the world has ever known. But it's this young person who has talent, but they own their own audience. This is insane. So I took that on a road show. And one of my, one of my investors, I had raised $10 million for an entrepreneur from a guy named Chuck May. And Chuck was somebody I felt like was a mentor to me somewhat. He was one of those people who were like, no, kid, your ideas are not crazy early on in my life from a business standpoint. And he ended up backing one of them. So I said, Chuck, I have to come show you the new stars, these influencers, blah, blah, blah. So I'm sitting in front of Chuck, and I'm telling him about Haley, and Haley's sitting there and telling him about our work together and this and that, whatever. And Chuck at the end of the meeting, he goes, I would like to support this. His son's pretty incredible. He brought his son with him, who was Gen Z, and his son was like, yeah, Dad, this is it. <laughs> and and uh, at the end of the meeting, Chuck says, well, I, interestingly enough, I sit on the board of a couple. It's Dr. Helen Kelly Hunt and Harville Hendricks. And they are looking for a solution to get their work out of the clinic and into the real world. And I think what you just told me can help do that. Do you want to meet them? And I go, Chuck, <laughs> I know everything about Dr. Helen <laughs> Kelly Hunt and Dr. Harville Hendricks. And I'm telling you right now, if you get me in front of them, I got something to say. And Chuck was like, what? word i was like yeah me and my wife saw him on oprah my ex we hired a therapist we read the books we went to Rika retreats and i literally said to them i wish i'd had this earlier this is what i was talking about i pointed at Haley. he goes wow okay boom so he calls me one day i'm in los angeles he said it was like seven o'clock at night if you can be here tomorrow morning i got a meeting for you on the board with the board um with dr helen Kelly hunt harvard it's tomorrow morning at 9 a.m Red eye, boom, boom, walking the door. I got there just in time, walking the door. And I looked at them and I said, I remember I knew I could see in my opening line. I saw Hel Helen was sitting there, Harvo was sitting there, a bunch of team members there, a bunch of team members there, and I'm standing up in front of the table. And I said to them, right outside this door, right outside this window, is a bay window on the tollway. They're on the build office building on the tollway. I said, five minutes up that road right there, Trinity Mills. I was a homeless kid in Dallas, Texas. And I believe that had I had access to what you guys know about having better relationships and improvement to health, that I would have even experienced even more career success and joy in life. So why don't we just give what you guys have already created to the kids? What they say? Yep, let's do it. So two years, I put together a bunch of Gen Zers, and we worked on extracting Helen and Kelly Hunt and Harville Hendricks life skill that's buried in their practice only for couples in crisis at the time, because they're now starting to expand that, but at the time, to young people. And they locked in with me for two straight years and they funded it. They gave me enough capital to focus on it. And we did. So you can't be in a crater house without learning how to dialogue. Oh, wow. <clears throat> you can't. Because it's the tool that you use. <laughs> See, our solution for having bad relationships or our solution for having challenging mental health Today is hire a therapist, go see them once a week. That's not enough. Meds, side effects are crazy. Most people can't afford either. So that's not a solution. No. That's not a solution that scales. Only 2% of the people on the planet go to relationship therapy. No, hold on a second. Only 2% of the people on the planet go to therapy. Is that my phone, yours? It's mine. Okay. Only 2% of the people on the planet. You should make it silent. I don't. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Only 2% of the people on the planet go to therapy. 
only a fraction of those people go to relationship therapy. And relationship therapy is the key to a mental health, better mental health. It's our relationship that traumatize us with our parents early in life, with our, with our significant other, with other people that are challenging. If you have a tool, that, a skill that allows you to connect instead of polarize with the people in your family, friends, coworkers, and followers, it improves your mental health. It's called mental fitness. So you can't be in a creator house without learning how to dialogue with your family, friends, coworkers, and followers without using the dialogue app that I created that allows me and you to dialogue without a therapist. Because I want scale. I want people to be able to do this on their own. And that's the foundation for the ability to be able to do the other things. Now that you have a, a life skill that helps you connect instead of polarize with people, what does that do for you? That makes brands want to work with you more. That makes creators want to collaborate with you more. That makes investors believe that you can lead more because at the end of the day, we're here to create things with other people. We're here to do things with other people and the people that have the skills to do that more are more desirable. They're more capable. So that's why that's the, that's the foundation of being in a creator house. You have to have that. You have to commit to being dialogical. You can't be in the creator house without doing that. That's incredible. <laughs> I love everything about it. Do you ever come across like people that you think are great fit and they learn all that and then yes they become troubled and yes they, it, it's, it's never it's not a perfect science right it's not none of it it's just it's just a, a a process and a tool that everybody can use um i don't do it perfectly all the time i, ha I have several gen zers say to me you're not you're not actually mirroring me properly or you're not doing dialogical or you're snapping because for us this is what's the beauty of being young and learning this skill I remember, let me tell you a little story about I told Helen Harville. I had them really understand where I was going with this. I said, Helen Harville, can you imagine this? Okay, so you're standing above a 12-year-old girl, and you're looking down on her, and you're like, hey, little girl, my name is Dr. Helen Kelly Hunt, and my name is Dr. Harville Hendricks. We're relationship therapists, and in 15 years, odds are you're going to be a couple in crisis. <laughs> and when you are, you should come see us. Because we can help you connect instead of polarize with your significant other. And I tap him on the shoulder and go, or Helen Harwell, you could tell her now. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So in the, the idea of it being a perfect science is not it. It's just having the life skill, using it, practicing it, becoming better at it. It absolutely helps you connect instead of polarized with the people in your lives, which that is what the brain is looking to do. Always. If you hear the, sh the shooter up in... Uh, Allen. Allen, right? Did you see what he said? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. After. You should always see what they say after. Because most times they're saying, people don't care about me. Nobody likes me. Nobody knows me. Nobody understands me. This and that, whatever. That's the extreme of it. Right. And we can always look at that as like, oh, the extreme is that person got an AR-16 and went and shot up a bunch of people for no reason. But it's the masses that are going through the same thing. They're not going to pick up a gun, but they're going to sit at home, lonely, anxious, depressed, suicidal, violence. It's the, the increase of the, 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 the results of that. We talk about this part of it. I talk about don't give your kid a cell phone. I was in a restaurant the other day, and there was an iPad in front of a baby that was about two years old. All of them. And the family was a big, beautiful Indian family. And I could see the baby scream because the baby was sitting at the head of the table, and the family was around this little mm -hmm. thing like this, right? And I'm on this side looking at the baby scream. This was on repeat. It was like a one minute and 30 second loop. Psycho. Yeah. And they're just trying to, they think that, oh, that, that makes the baby happy. It's quiet. It's not, it's not. But the problem with that is, and this is what Dr. Helen and Kelly Hunt and Harville Hendricks taught me is, 
when a baby is born, it's those early relationships, that eye contact with the mom. I'm crying because, yo, check that diaper. If you don't check that diaper, you're going to get some more of these tears, bro. It's true. It's hot in here. I'm hungry. This thing turns that into, who cares if I've got a crappy diaper? Who cares that it's hot in here? Who cares that it's, you know, I'm hungry? And who cares that you can help me? Mm. I care. So let's realize that if we're doing that, the baby needs to communicate to you. It need, and, and for a massive part of its youth, it needs to stay out from being in front of the screen between the relationships that are vital to them feeling like they can, they can connect with other people. It goes from the mom and dad to the friends, coworkers, spouse. Helen Harbor Ward, spouse level. I'm proposing that we start at Gen A and Gen C, and we understand the psychology of these things and how this will affect them. We put it in front of them too soon. A million percent. I couldn't so, agree more. So, yeah. Anyway. That is so interesting. I From I, the mind of a madman it is. <laughs> no, I think that everybody, I mean, this is like crazy. I feel like everyone needs someone like you in their life. I don't know how that's possible. but Well, we're, we're getting the word out. I'm, uh, this is, I don't, my team is encouraging me to do more of this. Oh, really? Yes. You need, it's very, very, honestly, it's very hopeful. I feel like someone like Masala, who, like me as her mother, I can, she has always been creative, like mm -hmm. crazy, and the business sense. Marcella's is just, very talented. I mean, You're one of the best dancers I've ever seen. Well, thank you. What you can do with your, with your thing, <laughs> yes. which is physical and spiritual and your energy. You know, people like us always look for it's a, you'd be surprised what goes into like somebody who's sophisticated at identifying talent, what we actually think about. Yeah. I can like, only imagine. Like it's like, it's, it's so much more than the obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I talk about an influencer who has a, you know, it's the rhythm that they cut their videos mm -hmm. that makes it special. Like, yeah. What? What do you mean? No, they they're 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 good at cutting a video, or the tone of somebody's voice, yeah, or the the extension of a dance move. It's mm -hmm. not the dance move; it's the whoa that went to a different place. It's hard for people to go to. It's like so respect to you, Sala, because at the end of the day, you 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 have a incredible gift. And people like you should receive the knowledge, the resources to mm -hmm. do your thing. Right. For the betterment of everyone else. So I appreciate it, that. Thank you. For the, sure. The choreography, you <laughs> don't even know that yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I, I can I already like, know. I've seen her do her thing. insane. But um, can you give us your social media platforms or anything that you would like yeah, for the world to, to know? Um, I mean, me, John Jackson Huffman, Actually, if you really want to connect with me, this is LinkedIn. LinkedIn. So oh. Jackson John Huffman on LinkedIn. That's okay. that's like that's it. Jackson John Huffman on LinkedIn. I do have Create Daddy on all of the platforms, but it's for I my clients. It. Yeah, because it's like it allows my it's like me tap into their thing. And, I love that. And they are launching World's Brightest Creator, which is my podcast here soon. So what is it called? World's Brightest Creator. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I have one more question though. For sure. Tell me about this. Necklace. My necklace? Yes. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I don't okay, that's a very good question. So I have always wanted to know where I'm from. Like really from. You know, being a foster kid and being a homeless kid, being a kid from the hood, I've always felt like there was more to my story than that. So I would go back to and talk to my uncles and be like, hey, man, can you tell me where we're from or tell me about my grandpa or tell me my aunt? It's just no. And they would give me a little bits of information like that. And one thing led to another, and 
I would do that for years. Uh, when you talk, if you ever talk to Stuart, ask him. Because Stuart went to the prison with me to go see my uncle who's on death row. Oh, like he, we did so much personal stuff. We what? were just business partners. We were we were boys, and we were healing for each other. So he went to the prison for me. He knew about my uncle being my grandfather being killed on death row. My uncle, my grandfather being killed by the police. My uncle on death row, and he was very, um, I would say, empathetic of that. I appreciate him for that. And he went to the prison to go visit my uncle who was wrongfully accused of something. He is. On death row. Yeah, absolutely. So I say all that because you're asking me about this necklace. So our culture loves the bling, the diamonds and this and that, whatever. And, and so I found a way to combine these two energies, which is me saying we should know who we are. And a lot of black men don't know who we really are. Really? Yeah, we don't know where we're from. We don't know our real names, which is why we create these names. Really? I'm I never knew Huffman. this. You think I'm a Huffman? I don't know. Okay, well, let me give you an example. I'm from Austria. As I've a, been as a, my as whole a life. black man, I know that I, my last name is not H U F F M A N. That's a slave name. So if you're, a lot of it is called identity crisis. That's the actual term for it. We just don't know it as black men. So we call ourselves Dr. Dre. Or we call ourselves this, or we call ourselves that. We change that name, and we say that's my government name. Uh-huh. So, fast forward, they got all this technology, and I decide one day that I'm going to go take the DNA test. I take this DNA test, and my uncles have been telling me, "Oh, we're Bakalukas, and we're from here, and we're from there, in Africa." And I get this DNA test back, and it tells me exactly where we're from. And I'm like, "Yo, that's incredible." And I went to my I my whole family. I was the first person to find out in my entire family for every generation that's been in America that we're Nigerian. Do you know what that was like to call my aunts, my cousins, my grandfather? My, say, we're Nigerian. All right, here's the report. That's so cool, though. Okay. So the spirit of the necklace is, because I understand that my entire Men, black men in America, really, that's who I'm focused on with this. I want us to know where we're from. I want us to wear our roots, know our roots, and return to our roots. And I think that that, me understanding that and learning about me being Nigerian and looking into what, I learned about Nigerian, in, in, my, in my DNA test, it literally says I'm a hunter, I'm from a hunter-gatherer African tribe. It says that. So then I called my African boys in Nigeria. I called Owo, who sold $3 million worth of NFTs in a day. And I said, Owo, you're in Nigeria. Tell me about the hunter growlers. And o- Owo tells me stories about hunters. And I look at, and I say to Owo, I'm doing that today. I do the hunting for the tribe. I go out and p- kill big sure. game. I bring in the big money. Hunters back then would be like, okay, I got this rock and this sharp tool. And I'm about to go get me some meat. And they would take their butts out there, run from the things that would kill them, kill the things that bring some tribe. And guess what they had to, when they kill something, guess what you have to do? You have to put that shit on your back and bring it back home. Oh. So you slapping across all kinds of terrain just to bring the tribe some food. There's such a sense of pride knowing that I'm a hunter-gatherer. It makes sense to me. You damn right it makes sense. <laughs> so now you get why I hunt the way I do. That's right. Why I have Generational as a partner. They've sold 1,400 companies between 50 and $500 million in Dallas, Texas. Why I ran Stegen as my partner, and he's the, C, the CEO trainer for 450 C. I'm a big game hunter, and this is big game, baby. <laughs> I love <already>. it. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. On a note. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Well, I don't talk to people. So <laughs> I don't talk to talking. people. I don't talk to nobody. What do you I just mean? do the work. I just do the work. I wouldn't well, expect it. You know what I'm saying? You asked me. The reason I'm here is because you asked me. And well, my team said, you. we've been wanting you to talk and tell people what time it is. So at the end of the day, well, I had to do it on two posh, baby. <laughs> already. 
<laughs> well, thank you. I yeah. can't thank you enough. And so. we are going to have some fun times ahead, and you come back more often. Yeah. That's right. I need you to be a Gen Z ally. We need to support your babies and being creators at this creator house right up the street. I told it's you. Not just far. tell me what I have to do. I, I don't am. know what I have I to am. do. I just need you to be a Gen Z ally, mama. You, we're going to get to that. But okay. Well, we need to have Marcella over there and <laughs> Jolie and yep. anybody else you think got it. Because I'm back. That's right. And I'm trying to help people do their thing in town. Thank you. Bang, bang. Thank you. (laughs) Two Podcasts.